Second time lucky. Already filmed this. Forgot to press record. Yes, I am a mug. Hello there guys and welcome back to Blues Fans TV for another Premier League match preview of mine as Chelsea are to take on Manchester United at Old Trafford tomorrow on Saturday at 5.30pm UK time and I'm really really excited for it because it's a really big game. It's a big game in terms of the fight for top four or in theory even the title, a big game in terms of rivalry and a big game for both teams and managers. Of course, if you are new to Blues Fans TV, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you drop a like if you do enjoy our content or if you just want to cheer me up and make me happy because you dropping a like does make me happy and who doesn't want to make other people happy? So make sure you drop that like button and, um, you know, if you don't know about it, also make sure to subscribe to my personal channel. Help me reach 7,000 subscribers over there by hitting the i button up there. You can find the link there or down in the description or just type in my name, Lawrence Vescoli on YouTube. Subscribe to me there. That'd be massively appreciated. There will be a video on the Manchester United game the day after, the day after like there was after the Sevilla game, which was a very interesting one. So maybe you do fancy checking that out. But enough about that. Let me quickly shout out our sponsors though. And um, if you do want to pre-order Football Manager 21, do so with the link in the description below. Get it early, pretty much just for being a Chelsea fan and get 10% off using the code BLUESFANSTV. And also, if you want to order any of the new Chelsea gear, make sure you use the other link in the description below. It helps the channel out massively and it gets you the best deal possible. But now, let's get into the most important bits from Frank Lampard's pre-match press conference earlier today. And unlike last time, we did actually get team news today. And that is that Kepa Aritha Balaga has picked up a shoulder problem, so will not travel to Manchester. But other than that, and, um, you know, of course, Billy Gilmer, who, you know, we know is injured, we, are no, we have no other injuries, which is, for once, bloody brilliant news, especially with Wondi, of course, having taken the number one goalkeeper spot from Kepa anyway. This really isn't that big a deal. But, of course, I still do hope that Kepa gets well soon. Because other than that, nothing much that Lampard said, you know, was particularly interesting. He only repeated things that he said before anyway. So, with that information, let's get into the lineup that I myself would pick and then my attempt of trying to predict Frank Lampard's team for tomorrow's game. On this side of the screen, I will start, of course, with, in my team, the goalkeeper, because I think four of the back five, if you want to call it that, pretty much picked themselves. Of course, Edouard Mondi in goal, even more clear now that Kepa is injured anyway. Um, Thiago Silva as the right, you know, centre-back. Kurt Zuma as the left centre-back. And Ben Chilwell as the left-back. I think those four kind of picked themselves. And a right-back, personally, I would have Rhys James, because I just think he deserves to stay in the team after being a best player midweek, if you ask me. And, um, you know, I know Aspi is great and is a leader and also usually actually does quite well in big games. But, you know, I think Rhys did so well on Wednesday, or Tuesday, rather. Um, he deserves to stay in the side. In terms of formation and then in turn in midfield, I'm really not so sure about it, though. A lot depends on Manchester United, because um, it depends on their approach, really. If they turn up with a back five, sitting fairly deep and trying to hit us on a break, I think a 4-2-3-1 is the best option for us. But if they decide to be aggressive and press us and be on the front foot and only play a back four, it might be smarter, to, uh, might be smarter for us to go for a 4-3-3 formation to make sure we don't lose the midfield battle. But because they're very difficult to predict, and I personally think 4-2-3-1 is our best formation, um, that, is what I'm go, that is what I'm going to go with here. But again, I'm not sure about who should be a double pivot. I did a video on my channel about this after the Sevilla game, talking about this at length, because when we're being defensive, I don't actually see the point in playing in Golacante, which to some of you might not make a lot of sense. Surely when we're playing defensive, we should have the best defensive players. But in my opinion, Kante, yes, he's one of our, well, he's by, by far our best defensive, you know, minded midfielder but in a different way to just being defensive. You know, he's great when we're on the front foot and people are hitting us on the counter and he intercepts and predicts and anticipates where people are going to go and manages to pull off these great tackles because he have to, has the pace and the tackling ability to do so. When we just sit and, you know, the job of the double pivot is mainly to just cover holes, that's kind of wasting counter because when we win the ball back, being pressed, being in a deep position, we need players that are better at, you know, on the ball and progressing the ball forward. And that's why I think actually Kovacic and Jorginho will be a better um you know, combination, I guess. But as I personally don't want us to be so defensive again, I will stick to a pairing of Jorginho and Gola Kante. But, you know, if Lampard does decide to be defensive again, I would actually say Kovacic and Jorginho together is the better pairing. But coming to the front four, in my opinion, they are picking themselves, you know, in all honesty. Havertz in the 10, although I do want to see a bit more in terms of linking up the defence and attack from him because he's the number 10. He's playing that role that's meant to do exactly that job and he didn't do anywhere near enough of it against Sevilla, for example. And then, Frank, I'm going to say it one last time. Please start Christian Pulisic on the left rather than the right. Please do. I'm going to be fuming. 
I'm going to be fuming if you're starting with the right again, even though I think you will, but I'm going to be fuming anyways. Because, you know, on the right, I think it's time to start Hakim's ear. I think it really, really is. Even if Frank said in the press conference that Hakim is not um, fully match fit, and even Hakim Ziyech himself said that in his own press conference yesterday, and Frank said, you know, we need to manage him, but how will he ever get match fit if all he gets is 30 minutes late on in games? So they're very often stop and go like they were on Wednesday, on Wednesday or when they're on the knife's edge, and it's very difficult for him to actually find his feet as we saw in the last, in, or in his two appearances for Chelsea so far. In my opinion, we should start him and take him off after 50 minutes or an hour or so, if necessary, even at half time. Because can he really be worse than Mason Mount on the wing? I don't think he can, because Frank, it's enough. No more Mason Mount on the wing. We've had it with that. We've absolutely had it. We've tried it. It don't work. And this is no criticism of Mason Mount himself. You know, the man's playing on the wing. If we put Oliver Giroud in goal and we would concede 10 goals, would we be moaning at Giroud? No, we'd be asking, why is he playing in goal? It's not quite as drastic, but along those lines for playing Mason Mount on the wing. It doesn't make any sense when we have options to play a proper winger there. It just is more logical. Even if the whole defensive debate are oh, more defensively solid, it's not worth it because part of the defence is being good in attack. And if he hampers us in that position, it's not worth it. And then up front, of course, Timo Werner. But, um, you know, that kind of stated itself after I didn't mention him thus far. In terms of my predicted 11, I'm pretty confident in what Frank is going to do in terms of formation in most positions. But not at all where he will be, whether he will be more defensive and be happy to play long balls like against Sevilla or go back to what we usually do and be more aggressive and on the front foot. Now, here's what I think he will do formation and lineup wise. So, again, a 4 2 3 1, I think he will stick to that. The same back five as myself of Mondi, Silva, Zuma, Chilwell, and um, Reese James. And probably even the same double pivot as myself in Jorginho and Gola Kante. Although I do actually see a chance of him um, going for Kovacic and Kante rather than Jorginho. Although I would think that's super stupid because they're both runners and push high up the pitch and then no one sits and there's huge gaps um, left behind them and in front of the back four and we will just be annihilated. So, you know, I hope he doesn't do that, but I wouldn't be totally surprised if he does. Um, and then for the front four, of course, Kai Havertz still has the number 10. Pulisic, I'm sadly expecting again on the right wing. And then I actually think Frank will play team of Werner on the left and Sammy Abraham up front. That is what I think he will do. And I would not be happy about it because I think Timo Werner is just wasted on the left. You know, he's much better up front, clearly. Same goes for Christian Pulisic. It's ridiculous to play a player that's so much better on the left, clearly, than he is on the right, just on the wrong side. I will say, though, Pulisic needs to improve on the other side as well because if you put Hazard on the other wing, it would not have nowhere just not be anywhere near as good. Um, a little bit, yes, but the fall-off is a bit drastic for Pulisic. He needs to work on that himself, too. But I also have to say... I'm. <laughs> I'm kind of questioning myself because I'm realising I didn't actually predict Mason Mount to start. But hey, I mean, I'll go with this and we'll see tomorrow whether I'm right or not. But Frank, it's enough. We've had enough of Mason Mount on the wing and we want to see Christian Pulisic over there. That's what we want. And if you're not going to start Sierra, start out on the right because, you know, I'm not having it. I'm really, really not having it. But talking about the game tactically, at least from my perspective, we need to find a middle ground of being defensively solid but still on the front foot enough to actually create chances unlike on Tuesday when we did pretty much nothing against Sevilla. I believe our defence, when we have Thiago Silva and Mondi, is good enough to not be as defensive and, you know, as, as deep, I guess, as we did against Sevilla and still, you know, have a solid defensive performance. I want us to try and pass our way past an opponent's press, if United even do that. But the players need to be smart enough to know that sometimes the ball just needs to be punted long. But they do also need to have this footballing understanding of when that is the case and when it's better to keep the ball on the ground. And that is what, in my opinion, was strongly lacking against both South Southampton and Sevilla. It's not just as simple as blaming Lampard, saying, oh, the one team we did it wrong that way and the one, the one game we did it wrong the other way. No, the players are on the pitch and they need to find a middle ground of knowing when to punt it long, when to keep it on the ground. And because we're playing Manchester United, we also need to make sure we don't give away any penalties. Because them lot, they do love to go flying and crying for a penalty at the breeze of a wind hitting them, let alone an actual opponent. Luckily for us, um, Martial is suspended because he's the worst of the lot of them alongside Bruno Fernandes or Bruno Fernandes, but I feel like I'm saying it like that. So I'm going to call him Bruno Fernandes. Sorry, Bruno. Um, and that, I guess, leads me on to talking about Manchester United. But first and foremost, I want to shout out Marcus Rashford for the incredible work that he's doing to fight the problems of children in the UK not having enough to eat. Marcus, you're a legend. But please don't score against us tomorrow. <laughs> please, that'd be good. You know, when we last played them in the FA Cup semi-final, we absolutely battered them. Clearly the better team. Beat them 3-1. But the other three meetings last season went Manchester United's way. Sometimes more fortunate lead than others. But, you know, still, they won three out of the four meetings against them uh, against us. So, you know, it definitely won't be easy tomorrow. Currently in the league, they're only sitting 15th, actually, 
although they do have a game in hand because they didn't play a match day one. So they're on six points from four games with two wins and two losses, both of which losses at Old Trafford, so they haven't actually won a game at home yet this season. They came against Crystal Palace and then a 6-1 trashing with Jose Mourinho's Tottenham. Um, and also they got the luckiest win you'll ever, ever, ever see against Brighton. I mean, they got a penalty after the bloody full-time whistle had gone. Even if that was a correct penalty to be given, Brighton were denied a clear penalty previously in the game by VAR. Don't know how that happened. And they also hit the woodwork about 15 times. So, you know, the luckiest win you'll ever see just last weekend against Newcastle. United won quite convincingly when they beat them 4-1. And then, of course, in midweek, that win over PSG in the Champions League, in which they set up very defensively, but still created the majority of chances and played a really good game. So fair play. United usually playing the 4-2-3-1 formation, but against good teams like ourselves last season, more often than not, or PSG midweek, um, Socha actually does tend to pick a 3-5 at the back formation. So it will be very, very interesting to see See what they do tomorrow but regardless of what they do they have some great players whether it's Rashford, Pogba, Fernandez, or players that there's even a small doubt over in terms of whether they'll be available like the new signing Edison Cavani but also Mason Greenwood and reportedly even Harry Maguire is a minor doubt. Um, you know like I said already Martial is suspended but they do have great players. They do have great players and that at the end of the day will mean it's going to be a very very difficult game that I don't think actually has a favourite but what I do believe is that it's more down to Chelsea whether Chelsea win then it's, about, then it's down to Manchester United where the Chelsea win. Because it's about us not being too defensive. It's about us being smart enough in how we play football. Making sure that we have enough movement, especially in the final third, but also quick movement so that we actually create chances, unlike on Tuesday, and then take our chances. You know, that's also one of those things. We've scored a lot of goals this season already, but still don't take enough of our chances, if we're going to be totally honest. And at the back, let's not make stupid individual errors, which includes giving away penalties and free kicks, but also just brain farts, for example, like the one Zuma and Kepa had, um, had against Southampton, because, you know, we can't afford to do those things again against Manchester United and if we you know do those things right the things that I say we should do if we do those and if we said if we don't do the things that I say we shouldn't do you know I'm very confident that we'll win just what I'm not sure about is whether we will actually you know do those things slash not do those things that we're not meant to do but I'm going to be positive I have to be positive because you know up to Chelsea and um, I'm going to predict the win for the Blues. I'm going to predict a win for the Blues. And I'm going to predict a narrow 2-1 win. Of course, it could be anything. Especially if we have a good day and Man United have a bad day. They could end up receiving another trashing at Old Trafford. But realistically, I'm expecting a narrow 2-1 win for the Blues. And I just hope I'm right. I just hope we get the win. That's all I bloody hope for. Because I hate losing to Man United. So I just hope we beat them. That'd be bloody brilliant. But that's really been it for me. Make sure you subscribe to Blues Fans TV. Like I said in the beginning already. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you want to make me happy. That's great. Right. And um, also leave me your thoughts ahead of the game down in the comments section below. That'd be massively appreciated. And of course, make sure you check out my personal channel to which um, the link you will find if you click the i button up there or down in the description below. Help me reach 7k subs over there. And along the way, of course, getting up to 10k subs, that'd be brilliant. And um, just lastly, let me shout out our sponsors one more time. Um, if you do want to pre-order Football Manager 21, do so with the link in the description. Get it early and get 10% off for using the code BLUESFANSTV. And also, if you want to order any of the new Chelsea kits, Make sure you use the link in the description, the other link in the description below. And, um, you know, it helps the channel out. It gets you the best deal possible so everyone is happy. But, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Up the chills. Very excited for the game tomorrow. And I'll see you when I see you.